Hi. Now, what I'd like to do is show you an example which brings together both the conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law. We've got here two spheres A and B, which are of equal radii and masses of 1 kilogram and 1.5 kilograms respectively. A and B move towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line on a smooth horizontal surface with speeds of 2 meters per second and 1 meter per second respectively. If the coefficient of restitution between A and B is 2 thirds, find the velocities of the spheres after collision. So to do something like this, we'd draw our particles, say something like this, and would label them A and B. We've got the masses of A and B. We're told that A is 1 kilogram, pop that in there, and B is 1.5 kilograms. And going to look at the motion before impact, so just put that there, before, and then below we'll look at the motion after impact. So before impact, we're told that A and B move towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line. And the speeds are 2 meters and 1 meters per second respectively. So we've got A moving at 2 meters per second towards B, which is moving towards A at 1 meter per second. And then they hit one another and we're told that to find their velocities after collision. Now I don't know which way the velocities go, so what I'm going to do is just say we'll make it go to the right. Okay, now let the mathematics do the work. I'm often asked which way do you put your arrows? Well, it doesn't really matter. Let the mathematics check out what it is. If VA turns out to be negative, then we know that it's going in the opposite direction. And likewise with VB. So we need to consider first of all the conservation of linear momentum. So we'll just put up here a little subtitle cons of linear momentum. Okay. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with the conservation of linear momentum. That is that the momentum before impact is equal to the momentum after impact. And to do this, because we're dealing with vector quantities, we need to set up a positive direction. And it's arbitrary. It doesn't matter which way we go. But I'm going to take to the right as positive because my final velocities are to the right. OK? So, momentum before impact. That would be the mass of A, we'll say 1, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be positive 2 plus the momentum of B, which is its mass, 1.5, times its velocity, which is going to be negative 1, because it's in the opposite sense to that. Okay, And this is equal to the momentum afterwards, the total momentum after impact. So it's going to be the mass of A, which is 1, multiplied by positive VA. Okay, And then we add to this the momentum of B after impact, so its mass is 1.5, and its velocity is VB. It's in the positive sense, the same as A, velocity of A. So there's our equation so far. If we tidy this up, we've therefore got 2 minus 1.5, which is going to leave us with 0 0.5. So we've got 0 0.5 there equals just simply VA plus 1.5 VB. Now, We'll just divide or section that off, OK? So we'll just come down here. And what we need to do now is create another equation. And that equation that we're going to consider is the one form from Newton's experimental law. So we'll just put a subtitle up here, Newton's experimental law, or you could say Newton's law of restitution. Now. What is that? Well, we know that the coefficient of restitution compares the relative speed of separation to that of the relative speed of approach. 
And so the coefficient of restitution, E, is two-thirds. So we've got two-thirds equals, and we're looking at the relative speed of separation now. And remember that we need a positive quantity on the top and the bottom. So when it's the relative speed of separation, VB would be greater than VA in a situation like this. So it's going to be VB minus VA because I've got both arrows going in the same direction. And we compare this to the relative speed of approach. And because they're approaching one another, then the relative speed of approach will be 2 plus 1, okay, 3 meters per second. So cleaning this up, we've got 3 here, we've got 3 here, so if I was to multiply both sides by 3, we'd just be left with 2 equals VB minus VA. Now I've got two unknowns, okay, VB and VA, and we've got two independent equations. I'll call this equation 1, we'll just stick that down there, and we'll call this equation 2. So we've got to solve these simultaneously, and I can see that if I was to add equation 1 with equation 2, then I'm going to be eliminating the VA. So if we add those two equations, what we therefore have is 2 plus the 0 0.5, so it's going to be 2.5, equals and we've got VB here plus another 1.5 VB that's going to be 2.5 VB and as I say as for the VA minus VA plus VA well, that goes out to zero so nice and easy now because if I just divide both sides by 2.5 you can see that the velocity of B equals 1 okay 1 meter per second. And notice how it's come out positive, so it's indicating then that movement must be to the right, since this was the positive sense. Okay, now we've got that, all I need to do is to substitute this result, or just put substitute, the velocity of b, 1 meter per second, into one of the two equations. Well, we'll just go into number one, say. And if we do that, we therefore have 0 0.5 equals VA plus 1.5 times VB. Well, that's just going to be plus 1.5 then. And again, if we just section this off here, then what we've got is that if we subtract 1.5 from both sides, therefore VA equals 0.5 minus 1.5, which is going to be minus 1. Minus 1 meter per second. So what is this telling me? Well, it's telling me that because it's negative, that the speed of A will be 1 meter per second, but it's going to be in the opposite sense to what I've got here. So we know that it's reverse direction. So what we can say is therefore A and B, okay, reverse direction. So reverse direction. And when it comes to their speeds, we've got the speed of A, well that's going to be one meter per second, and the speed of B, that too is going to be one meter per second. Okay. So I hope it's given you an idea anyway how we can go about combining the conservation of linear momentum with that of Newton's experimental law. And that will allow us to solve the problem, finding out the velocities. Okay.